So, <clears throat> notice these guys, they're trying to get out of this shallower water and try and make it up to the deeper water. But, you guys carry horrible viruses and stuff that kill our native. Are you listening? Yes, you, little one, right? That kill our native crayfish, right? Now, if I catch you, it's illegal to release you. Just, just putting it out there, right? So, guys, you're busted. Okay, guys, so this is a signal crayfish. I picked these up yesterday. Um, found them wandering up the stream um, from a shallower bit where the water has run out. Um, there's a shallower bit and they were trying to make their way to the deeper bit. Um, but caught them red-handed. Um, so no nets were used or anything. So it was all uh, legit. So how do we know that this little chap is a signal crayfish? For a start, on the top of his head here, these bits are very straight. Whereas on a white clawed indigenous UK uh, crayfish this is a triangle okay also just behind his his eye here there's two lumps whereas the uh, UK white claw um, only has one lump there and his claws we'll start off with a come tell me mate we don't hold your claw down yeah, so his claws are also very, quite smooth, whereas the uh, UK indigenous jobbies are really lumpy. And then underneath his claws, they're really bright red. Yeah, and then you've got the sort of bluey tinge. He's really grabbing onto that. There you go. Play with the skewer. Um, so, yeah history of these these were introduced in around the 70s um, because they were bigger and more meat on them than our UK white claws um, but somehow they got into our water supply unfortunately they also carry um, the crayfish plague so that's killed off a vast majority of the UK crayfish which is really bad um, and these just take over rivers, absolutely take over. The Environment Agency, rightly so, um, say you have to have licenses um, to fish for them to stop people having contaminated nets, nets that are contaminated with the, the crayfish plague, to stop them being introduced into areas where they haven't got it. So I'm going to cook these guys up um, and I'm going to talk you through it but I just thought I'd show you some of the anatomy of them first. Come on, let go of my skewer. That is quite a nip, it's quite good actually because it's keeping him busy. So underneath, very like a baby lobster. So most of the tail is where you're going to get the meat, so you can see how much meat's there. Sort of, I don't know, probably about the same sort of meat as a king prawn, something like that. Um, Big old feelers at the front. There you go. Big old feelers at the front. Um, so I caught only caught two yesterday, um, but literally just lifted them out of the ground, um, lifted them out of the water. Um, also, on the tips of their claws, uh, on the tips of their legs, they've actually got little claws, which is not something I'd noticed before. So these are still, you know, fully articulated little pincers. Right, so both, now they're both are chilling in my sink. Now, I caught them yesterday. They've been sitting in, I've changed the water twice. They've been sitting in clean water, um, basically because I wanted them to, you know, poop and clear themselves out um, before I cook them.
Tony Shakari's original Creole seasoning. That this stuff is amazing. Uh, I've only managed to find it ordering it from America, um, but be careful when you order it because they do a, I think it's a one pound, yeah, one pound, one ounce one, and then they do some little tiny ones as well, but they look exactly the same when you're ordering, so just be mindful of uh, the size of it. I think, I don't know, they were like a tenner or something. I think it was like 10 quid for two, um, but it's just amazing stuff. But for some reason we don't sell it over here, probably because it's got some weird salt in it that's illegal now. But this stuff on venison, it's just good on everything. It's so good. Um, nice bit of spice to it, but it doesn't hang around. It's not like chili spice, it's a pepper spice. Hits you and you go, whoo, that's nice. And then it's just gone. Um, whereas chili, you know, just drags on and on and on and you end up wanting to die. So you're gonna let this uh, simmer for like 10 minutes um, to get the best out of it. And then we shall chuck in the little crayfishes. Right, so what harm are they doing? So not only are they spreading the um, crayfish plague, which is a sort of fungal infection that kills the native white claws, they predate on amphibians, tadpoles, um, small fish, eggs, basically anything alive in, in, a, in a water supply, they will have it. Um, also cannibalistic as well, so they'll eat each other um, when there's not a lot of food around. So if you're trying to keep your fish stocks up, you need to get rid of them. So you could go and have a word with um, a local fishing lake and see if they'll allow you to trap crayfish in their fishing lake. If you want to net and trap um, crayfish, you need to message the environment agency, tell them where you're going to fish and have landowners permission. Um, they can also burrow into banks so they'll burrow into a bank and they can burrow in about two meters. So if you get enough crayfish population burrowing into a bank, all the holes interconnect, then you get landslips and causes flooding. Um, also gets rid of the habitat for a lot of wild animals like water voles. Um, so I'm gonna dispatch them, I'll show you how to do that. And then we're gonna gut them, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then we give them three to five minutes um, We'll get it to a boil again, crank it up to a boil, three to five minutes, turn off the gas, move it off the heat, and then leave them to sit in the water for about 15 minutes so they can soak up all those nice juices. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of research into crayfish and lobsters. Um, a lot of people think they can't feel pain because they've got a decentralized nervous system and no cerebral cortex. But, They've also done tests where they had put little electric shocks in their burrows whenever they went in there. So they ran out, uh, so they must be able to feel something. They must be able to feel some sort of pain, okay? I know they're only crayfish, but you know, let's be ethical about these things. What is the point of throwing something in boiling water when you don't have to? Um, also, this method of killing them also opens up the shell because they're watertight. So if you can boil them, you make all this nice juice, and then you boil them, nothing is getting inside to the meat, so it's a bit of a waste of time. Back of the shell there, you push in, and then lean it forward. Right, centre fin just there. If you twist it, one side, then twist it the other side, and then pull, it should, bring out, so there, there's the end of his tail, and that is his full intestine. And that intestine runs right the way through the ma majority of the best meat. So, in the go. And we give them five minutes. I'm trying not to stem steam your lens up here. You'll see the colour of colour change them. Look how beautiful they look. Okay, so that's, that's had uh, four minutes. So gas off, uh, electric off, cover, and then we'll make the heat. And we'll leave that to sit for 10 minutes. Um, and then after 10, 10 minutes, ready to eat. Nice one. So there we go. It's that simple. Now, if you're out in the woods, you can quite easily 
just cook them as they are because they don't actually taste that bad but this is like the traditional well, one of the traditional recipes but you can legally catch them with you know bacon a piece of string and a stick um, without worrying about all the netting and the environmental um, concerns as long as you know how to identify them don't go don't go picking on our poor little uh, indigenous so there you go but if you catch one and you think it's too small you still can't put it back so once you've caught them you have to dispatch them either destroy them or eat them you know same with the uh, red gray squirrels if everybody tried a gray squirrel it would sort out the habitat for the little red squirrels to return which are a native breed so there you go doing my bit okay so that's the claws and the tails um, stripped out of them and this is what we end up with here so it's not masses of meat um, for the smaller ones but the big ones um, you know you get a decent amount of meat out of them and obviously you could quite easily sit sit there and catch 20 of these um, and then you've got a nice big stock it's only because I, I was passing I picked them up I know they have to be destroyed and I'm not into wastefully killing stuff for no reason um, so yeah at least we get a snack out of it